your name? Ahmed Al-Zaid. Ahmed Al-Zaid, Mr. Ahmed, good morning. I am Mr. Mark, I am your nurse, and I'm here to assess your respiration. Would that be fine with you? Yes. All right. Mr. Ahmed, um, I just have some few questions for you. Um, do you have any conditions, risk factors, which may affect your respirations? Do you have pain right now? No, no. Fever? <laughs> no. Okay, do you have any uh, asthma? No. Chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases? No. And any other conditions which you think might affect your respiration? No, no I'm good. Thank God. Okay, now I need to check signs and symptoms which might be related to your respiration. Can you open your mouth, please? Oh. All right, I'm checking on your lips. There are no bluish discoloration. Can you, oh, can you, I would like to see the mucous membrane. Okay, the nail beds. Can I see your hands? All right, there are no cyanosis. Okay, um, I also need to check whether the patient is feeling restless, irritable, uh, the confusion of the patient. Uh, Mr. Ahmad, do you know where you are right now? Yes. Okay. Where are you right now? University. All right. And uh, what time of the day is today? Is what time? What time of the day is right now? Is Still it morning or evening? Morning. Still morning. Good. Okay. That means that the patient is not confused. Okay. And the patient talking to me, that means that the patient's having a good level of consciousness. The patient is alert, conscious, and coherent, all right? Next, of course, you may also need to ask the patient, is the patient having some pain during inhalation? Do you have any pain during inhalation? No. Okay. And any other signs and symptoms which might be related to the respiration of the patient? Like? No. Do you have any productive cough? No. Okay, good. Thank you for uh, thank you for your answers, Mr. Ahmad. I already checked your ABG, CBC, and oxygen saturation. They are quite normal. You need to determine the previous baseline respiration of the patient. In the patient's file, you need to check the previous uh, baseline uh, respiratory rate the patient had. Okay, this means that we can now compare what will be the respiratory rate today and the previous ones. It should not be too far from each other. Mr. Ahmad, will you be comfortable if I elevate the head of the bed to around 45 to 60 degrees? Would that be fine with you? Yes. Okay. This one is good for you? It's relaxing. All right, good. 45 to 60 degrees keeps the patient in a position of comfort so that you can adequately assess the patient, the patient's respiration while he or she is resting. Of course, I've already washed my hands, then I need to draw the curtains to provide client privacy. This is commonly done for many procedures that requires privacy of the patient, so that if I'm going to expose the parts of the body of the patient, he will not feel uncomfortable. And Mr. Ahmad, I need to remove the linen so that I could check on your chest, all right? If the patient is wearing thick clothes like jackets, you, they, you need to remove this thing so that you could see the rise and fall of the chest of the patient. Next, step number eight is you need to place the client's arms on the lower chest or over the abdomen. Mr. Ahmad, can you please put your arms over your abdomen or on, the, on your lower chest, all right? Okay. Or put your hands, the hands of the nurse, over the abdomen of the patient, all right? Why do we need to put this on top of the abdomen of the patient? So that you will feel the rise and fall of the, of the client's chest, all right? If the patient's client's chest rise, it means the patient is inhaling. If it recoils, it goes down, it goes back to its original uh, state, it means the patient is exhaling. One inhale and one exhale is one respiratory cycle. And that is step number nine. Okay, you need to observe first that the patient is having the respiratory cycle. Without seeing the respiratory cycle, one rise, one fall, one inhale, one exhale, 
do not start counting it, all right? So that you will not have an inaccurate findings or uh, respiratory rate, okay? Then using a watch with second hand, when the second hand strikes the number, example number 12, all right? Now you start counting the respiration. If the rhythm of the patient is regular, malum regular, regular yes, means yeah, yeah. the normal. speed of respiration is the same all throughout, mostly, all right? Okay, if the rhythm of the patient is regular, okay, I will count the respiration for 30 seconds. Yeah. When I started at 12, the, the, the second hand is at 12, I will finish at six. what number? Six. At 6. Since the patient's respiration is regular, I will count only up to 30 seconds and whatever number of respirations that I got, I will multiply it by 2. Yeah. Yes. For example, I counted from Mr. Ahmad's respiration, it's 10. 10 times 2 equals, I have 20 breaths per minute for Mr. Ahmad. All right? If the respiration is not regular, okay, then I need to count the respiration in one full minute. If I start with my watch with a hand at 12, I will finish with a hand at the same, 12 also. It means to say that it has go around the clock for one minute already, okay? Another case, if the patient is breathing very, very slow, we call it bradypnea. Okay? Or the patient is breathing very fast. I need to count in one full minute. All right? Now I said there are three conditions I will count in one full minute. If the patient's breathing is irregular, if the patient is breathing very, very slow, and if the patient is breathing very, very fast. All right? In these cases, I need to count the respiration in one full minute. From him. Next is you need to observe the respiratory depth. The respiratory depth means to say how deep or shallow the respiration is. And the third one, you need to check again the regularity, the rhythm of the patient's breathing. Is it regular or irregular? Regular means to say that the patient's respiration, inhaling and exhaling, is being done in a constant speed. The speed is the same all throughout in one full minute or even more. If the patient's respiration is changing, sometimes slow, sometimes fast, then the breathing is what you call irregular breathing. After these things, you may, you may need to change the linen of your patient, wash your hands, and discuss the findings with your patient and document your findings on the nursing room. Mr. Ahmad, your respiratory rate is 20, that is normal, and your respiratory depth is also normal. You are not breathing too deep or too shallow, and the rhythm is...